Hello, my name is Allison Warner and I am the Chief Editor of Orthodontic Products. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of In the Sterilization Room with Jackie, where we talk to infection prevention and sterilization expert Jackie Doors about what you need to know to keep the orthodontic team and patients safe during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. For 20 years, Jackie has been a consultant specializing in instrument sterilization and infection control and prevention in the dental setting. She has degrees in microbiology and dental hygiene and has been a featured speaker at the American Dental Association and the American Association of Orthodontists. Hi, Jackie. Good to be back with you. Good to be back with you. Hi, Allison. You know, we may have to change your introduction on that <laughs> because I heard 20 years experience and oh. I'm hesitant to admit it, but I'm really coming up on 30 years of experience oh, wow. with it. So we may have to add a, de a decade to that introduction we with will it. Add a decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it is it has been a a privilege and an honor uh, to serve the orthodontic profession for those three decades with it. Yeah. Uh, it's been a two-way street. Um, mm -hmm. I bring my microbiology and my engineering type background and dental hygiene to mm -hmm. instrument sterilization and infection control and OSHA, but I also learn from the ortho teams. Yeah. Uh, all of the information that I share comes through experience and orthodontist and orthodontic teams, they are so creative and ingenious. If they encounter a problem, they can make it find a, find or create the solution to it. Uh, and even during the the COVID-19 pandemic and as we've reopened offices, mm -hmm. I've seen some ingenious solutions to challenges uh, yeah. coming from the orthodontic office of how can we provide safe care uh, with this aerosol disease transmission. So yeah. uh, we, we focused on, in a lot of uh, different areas of safety mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the team and the patients uh, yeah. in all of our, what are we up to the 25th or the 26th episode of In the Sterilization Room? 26 at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, well, today we're going to talk about kind of a perennial issue for orthodontic practices. This is, you know, whether or not I'm you're going, in yeah. or not. <laughs> So we're going to talk about instrument maintenance because we've talked about cassettes and sterilization when we did kind of our four-part series on remodeling the dinosaur orthodontic practice. But I wanted to talk today about what do you, what do practices need to do in terms of ongoing maintenance of all those instruments? Well, you know, when when we do a sterilization remodel um, and, and convert an office to say cassettes with it, very mm -hmm. often we have to order new instruments to put into those cassettes because they need uh, to replace some of the older instruments. And once you buy instruments, they don't last forever. Right. It's a huge financial investment and we'd like to think that all of those distal end cutters and ligature cutters are going to function for the next 20 years but they don't. Just mm -hmm. like your kitchen utensils, the knives in your kitchen get dull. Well, those ligature cutters and distal end cutters, they can get dull. The hinges on the pliers, they can get stiff and not want to be as free moving. And they really need the, the free moving of that hinged instrument with it. And even the, the math house or their hemos, they need the tips to come together and over repeated use. I find that the tips can get bent on them and it, it's not coming quite the meeting at the tip. So there needs to be some sort of ongoing maintenance rather than just jumping in once or twice a year and doing a massive, okay, let's go through all of the instruments that we're using and see which ones are hard to open and which ones are dull and we'll send them all in for repair. Mm -hmm. um, that's not an efficient system. Yeah. Having something that's ongoing on a routine basis is the most efficient system. And one of the things that I recommend is that as the team, uh, fin as the as orthodontic assistant finishes caring for a patient, if they've noticed that one of those pliers is either hard to open, is not cutting, or is not functioning optimally, then that should be taken out of that setup right then before it goes through cleaning and sterilization. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a, a designated area when they come into the sterilization room that they remove that and they, they can place that instrument that needs to be repaired. And if they're using cassettes, because remember, if once you have instruments in a cassette, then once that in cassette is closed and locked, those instruments go through the cleaning and the sterilization mm -hmm. and it would come right back to the next assistant with the damaged instrument 
if you don't replace that one that needs to repair. So one of the things that I recommend is as they close their cassette, they take out that instrument that does need to be repaired, go into the sterilization room, that instrument would go into the repair bin. Okay. And then they retrieve another instrument from sterile packaging and put that sterile clean instrument into the cassette, then send the cassette through cleaning and sterilization so mm -hmm. that when it comes back to the next assistant to mm -hmm. care for a patient, there's a sharp instrument in there or all of the instruments are optimally functioning. You right. can imagine that if you put that dull instrument back into the cassette and then send it through cleaning and sterilization, and you were the next assistant that re retrieved <laughs> that cassette, you'd be pretty darn frustrated. Right. That you've got, oh, dang, who put this one in here? This mm -hmm. one needs, to, it's that same instrument that I had last week that's mm -hmm. frustrating me. Right. So putting those instruments into the repair. Now, there may be some instruments that are beyond repair. Mm -hmm. Um, tips can break out of instruments. You can have a ligature cutter that the tip will break out, uh, or maybe it gets bent in some way, or it's just, it's, it's beyond repair. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that needs to be taken into accounting also with mm -hmm. those instruments so that you're not having to do that one massive day mm -hmm. of going through instruments. Now they may still want to do a review uh, you know, once a year. And, and I always recommend doing that, say, at the beginning of the year, like in January or February. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then look at, do we need to uh, add more cassettes? Has our practice grown? And rather than seeing 60 patients a day, now we're seeing 85 patients a day. Okay. Well, you may need a greater inventory of cassettes, or you may have modified your practice treatment with patients, and half of your patients now are liner patients. Mm -hmm. And if they're changing from aligner patients to uh, regular brackets and arch wire type tr orthodontic treatment, they may need more scissors to help with trimming the aligners or, or, mod or again, modifying their instrument setup. So that January, February time, it's a good time to evaluate because the American Association of Orthodontic Meeting comes up usually at the end of April or the 1st of May. And mm -hmm. many of the manufacturers, both for equipments and instruments, have meeting specials. And so that's a good time to order or place if you need to adjust your cassettes and your instrument inventory. Okay. Well, once the staff have pulled those damaged instruments out and put them in the, you know, the repair bin, what should they do with them to prepare, you know, to get them well, to the, the repair shop? <laughs> Exactly right. The temptation is to pull that instrument out and now it's dirty and it's yucky. We've put it in the repair yeah. bin that yeah. I think you've got a photo of the, the dirty area in the sterilization mm -hmm. room and you see that upper cabinet that has a red light in it. That mm -hmm. designates the contaminated side of the sterilization room. And when that cabinet door is opened, then mm -hmm. you'll see we put two plastic tubs or bins or trays in there mm -hmm. and one is labeled repair. So that instrument that needs sharpening or needs to be repaired, it would go in the repair bin. And then we have another bin there that is labeled beyond repair. <laughs> so yeah. if the tip is broken out, it would go, but none of these instruments can be returned for sharpening mm -hmm. or for replacement if it's a, a damaged instrument mm -hmm. until it's sterilized. Oh, okay. So the instruments are going to have to be taken out and to label them, I would recommend taking a piece of autoclave tape mm -hmm. and make like a tag that goes mm -hmm. around the handle. And then you can take out a permanent high temperature Sharpie okay. uh, that's autoclave and write on there what's wrong with it. Oh, Tips okay. don't meet. Hinge stiff or mm -hmm. sticky, whatever mm -hmm. identifies it or um, dull. If it's just dull, then it needs okay. sharpening. But if you write on there, otherwise somebody else, another assistant might take that out and go, looks fine to me. Right. I'll put it back in a cassette. Okay. You know, maybe this was a, a mistake. You know, mm -hmm. I'll put it back into a cassette. So it does need to be labeled. Then okay. once it's labeled, clean, then it can go into a pouch. And with the pouch, uh, it'll be sterilized. And now you can send that sterile instrument along to be resharpened. Okay. or to be repaired in whatever way it needs to, or mm -hmm. uh, whatever else you're gonna do with it. But it's got to be cleaned and mm -hmm. sterilized before you can send it back for any sort of uh, corrective measures on it. Okay. So that would okay. be a, a, a good way of having an ongoing system. And you can see how once a month, 
all mm -hmm. of those damaged instruments that need to be repaired can be packaged mm -hmm. up and sent back to if you use a sharpening service from either the, the company that you buy your instruments from or one of the sharpening services, then all mm -hmm. those instruments are sterile, ready to go into a shipping package and be sent off. Mm -hmm. And within a few weeks, you'll receive them back and you don't have one major, you know, in January, we're going to go through all the instruments, we're going to pull out all of the ligature cutters that need to be sharpened. And oh my gosh, there's a backlog at the sharpening service and you don't get them back for three to four weeks. Right. And yeah. you, you know, you need those instruments. So mm -hmm. having that ongoing maintenance keeps you optimal instruments sharp, having everything you need right in front of you for the best patient care, because those dull instruments can be a real aggravation. Yeah. Uh, both free assistance, you know, you're having to rock back and forth to try to cut uh, mm -hmm. a wire, a, a ligature tie, or, a, or uh, the arch wired when you go in with it, just, and it's uncomfortable for the patient. Right, because yeah. the, the, the dull instruments require a lot more force when you're in the patient's mouth. So having optimal instruments is both easier for the assistants and more comfortable for the patients. Definitely. Well, okay, so Jackie, now we've talked about sterilization and maintenance of instruments, but I wanna take a step back to the beginning. Um, what should orthodontic staff have in mind when it comes to choosing their instruments? You know, there've been a lot of changes in instruments in the 30 years that I've been <laughs> consulting, the <laughs> three decades. And, and when I go into offices, I'll often see a, a, a tub or a basket or a box of old instruments. Mm -hmm. And I look at some of those from 30 years ago and they have wide fat handles on them and they're heavy duty instruments. Many of the manufacturers have gone to what they call a, a slim handle or a, a long handle mm -hmm. that fits the, the, the smaller hands of some of the orthodontic assistants better mm -hmm. than those wide handles. So uh, whoever you're buying your from, instruments from, when the sales rep comes to your office, ask them to bring their instruments with them and mm -hmm. set aside an hour or two hours and, and have some arch wires and some ligature ties and a type of dot there to sit and see how do those instruments feel in your hand? Because mm -hmm. you may find a, a ligature cutter that you like much better than mm -hmm. the ones you were previously using. So mm -hmm. I think it is time to, you know, to look at those instruments and then procedures change too. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more aligner treatment and right. we're putting on uh, what are referred to as the buttons, you mm -hmm. know, with the aligner treatment. So you're, you're gonna need some different type of instruments. I know many offices even have at least one or two setups that are just the aligner instruments that they yeah. will use to put a dimple maybe as they refer to it mm -hmm. uh, in an aligner. So um, different type of instruments, take time to research them, see which ones and the assistants like and the doctor likes. Right. So I recommend that the team gets together when they do this, because often I'll have the assistants go, well, Jackie, it, when we're doing a new sterilization, the doctor mm -hmm. really wants this particular plier and the setup. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at the doctor and I'll go, how often do you use this to a patient? He goes, he or she may go, I, I really don't. I mean, <laughs> we use it maybe once or twice a day. And uh -huh. I, I said, well, would it be okay if we put this in a pouch that it's just available whenever you need it. And the doctor, he or she'll go, yeah, that, that's okay. Well, the assistants were under the impression that, hey, the doctor wanted that always available to them. But okay. if we're setting up 40 cassettes, mm -hmm. then it can save us having to buy more of those um, bird beaks or three prongs or whatever plier it is that's occasionally used, maybe mm -hmm. with five to 10% of the patients, but not 90% of the patients that they're seeing. Yeah. And okay. so having, having that list available, knowing the new pliers, you may want to substitute a, a different plier number. And if you'll look on the inside of the handle of the instruments, then you'll see the manufacturer's name and mm -hmm. the model number of the instruments. So that allows you to keep a record of what's your favorite instrument. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, know what, uh, what else is available as an equivalent. Say so that plier gets discontinued. Right. I've had some older pliers that get discontinued. So now you have to start searching for a new manufacturer or a new um, new instrument number to replace mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, one more question. <laughs> what should practices do with their instruments once they're beyond repair? Well, if they're beyond repair, mm -hmm. uh, say the tip's broken out of them, Hugh Freedy has a great um, recycling program. 
Oh. It's named Envirodent. Okay. And like I said, every office that I go into, if they've been in practice for 10, 20, 30 years, there's that old instruments box mm -hmm. or bin. Hugh Freedy's program, if you send in 12 instruments, mm -hmm. any brand, any manufacturer, I don't care how old they are. So okay. if you send them 12 ligature cutters, Hugh Freedy will give you one brand new Hugh Freedy ligature cutter as yeah. a reward for sending in all of those instruments and then they recycle the metals that are oh. going in. So it's it's removed, it doesn't go to the landfill or anything, mm -hmm. rather than just taking up space in the drawer in the laboratory or you know, in your storage room, uh, send those in. I know with Dr. Ana Garcia, when we did her sterilization remodel during closure, mm -hmm. um, she had bought a practice that had been in existence for almost 30 years. And they were able to send 144 instruments. That's the maximum you really accept <laughs> from an office. So they uh -huh. sent them 144 instruments and they were able to get 12 brand new pliers. You yeah. know, when you look at pliers and the cost of them is 150 to $200, that's a huge reward. That's a huge bonus for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to hear that there's some way to, you know, take care of them without throwing them in a landfill. So. Yeah. Well, and again, they all have to be sterilized. So they've right. got to be in those sterile packages. And you go and register on the Hugh Freedy website, and then they just send you a shipping label, and mm -hmm. you get a box, and the, all of those go back to Hugh Freedy, and you get your free bonus new plier for those. So great, great reward system to replace yeah. it. Now, at the same time, I would highly encourage that every office create a master list of the instruments with okay. the manufacturer's name, uh, the type of instrument, say, which wine guard do you like? Some offices mm -hmm. like a real thin, slim tip on their wine guard. And so you need that instrument number. And then you're able to print that out at any time. So when we start resuming and having live meetings again, mm -hmm. the AAO is supposed to be in Boston this year. And hopefully we'll all be able to go and go to the exhibit hall and mm -hmm. see instruments there, we well, could print that list out. The doctor can take it with them and say, okay, my team told me that we need to order 10 ligature cutters, and mm -hmm. this is the type that we want to order. And uh, so you're getting exactly what you need rather than just, oh, well, this problem, this looks good. Um, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and order this for the team right. because yeah. we all have preferences. What fits your hand, what gets back in those tight areas in the patient's mouth. We mm -hmm. want optimal instruments for the best care of each orthodontic patient. Definitely. Well, I think this is great information for our viewers, Jackie. So thank you so much. And we will be back next week for the next episode of In the Sterilization Room with Jackie. In the meantime, to catch up on past episodes or to check out the latest orthodontic industry news, visit our website at orthodontoproductsonline.com. Until next time, take care and be safe. Thanks, Allison. Thanks.